Hey folks, welcome to this analytics workshop. Uh, I'm Shika Verma. I'm the head of product for Amazon Data Zone, and I'm joined here with my colleague, Florian. Um, and we are very pleased to share a key capability of Amazon Data Zone with you, which is around automating data discovery and cataloging with ML. Um, Florian, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, everybody. Um, as Shika introduced myself, um, my name is Florian. I'm a principal um, product manager at AWS um, AI ML Research. And I've been working with the Data Zone team on automating metadata generation. And we're looking forward to presenting it to you today in this webinar. Thank you, Florian. All right, so let's dive in. We will first start with what Amazon Data Zone is, just to set the stage and uh, remind everybody of why we built Amazon Data Zone. And then we will dive into the automated data discovery and catalog features, which I'm super excited to share with you. Um, Florian will dive into the key capabilities and present you a demo. All right, let's get right to it. Number one, let's start with why we built Amazon Data Zone. So every company wants to be data driven, but only 26% of them say that they are. So why is this so hard? Let's dive into the reasons. The number one problem companies run into is that data is everywhere. Even across AWS, it's in multiple accounts and regions. So simply finding data is super hard. Number two, even after you find the data, getting access to it and knowing who to ask for access is super hard. Different teams own different data. They have different organizational setup in companies. It's very, very hard to find out who actually owns the data so that you can ask them for access. Even after you get access to the data, there are technical barriers that come in the way. For example, Different data people like to use different tools. Data engineers like more technical tools, data analysts, more, more, more visual tools. Um, so there's often a challenge on after you get access to the data, how do you use the right tool of your choice? Even after you get to the right tool of your choice, there is often people that you need to work with. Analytics is a team sport. And often data analysts and data engineers need to collaborate with each other on the same data set and use tools of their choice. This is super hard. And last but not the least, data governance is often hidden within individual tools and also um, data is managed differently by different organizations and teams. So this makes it extra hard. Right, let's see what we can do about this. So this is the reason why we build Amazon Data Zone. What Amazon Data Zone allows you to do is really unlock your data across organizational boundaries and teams because we have built in governance capabilities that allow your data producers and data consumers to work together. What are data producers? Data producers are teams that own data and want to share it with their organization or outside of their organization. Data consumers are folks who want to use this data to create data insights. Data Zone helps data producers and consumers work together. Let's go a little bit deeper into how we do that. So we'll talk about three main things. Number one, governing data access across organizational boundaries. Number two, connecting data people sh through shared data and tools. And number three, automated data discovery, which is what we want to demo to you today. But let's start with the first one. Governing data access across organizational boundaries requires a common framework to be established across teams where different teams can come in and set up their own rules on how they want to manage their data and share their data. Data Zone allows you to do this. Number two, as we talked about, analytics being a team sport and different data people needing different kinds of tools to work together, Data Zone helps you connect your data people by the virtue of having one unified data portal, which you'll see shortly in the demo as well. And number third, but last but not the least, of course, because this is what I'm super interested to show you today, um, is how do we automate data discovery and cataloging with machine learning? And with that, I'd like to bring Florian back to the stage so that he can talk a little bit more about the capabilities that we have in this space and show you a demo. Florian, the stage is yours. Thanks, Shika. Within Data Zone, it's the catalog with its business metadata that allows users to quickly discover the data they need for their job. 
they discover it via search in business language, or they understand it by looking at data asset detail pages and checking out the business metadata that it presents. That includes, for example, business names and descriptions, which are easy to understand, names and descriptions for tables and columns. It includes business glossary, a central collection of business terms to standardize the catalog, and metadata forms, which can be attached to data assets and capture additional business metadata. However, curating a catalog at scale is very hard, especially if you rely on manual data asset curation. We've had customers that told us that they had to abandon the data cataloging efforts because they found it impossible to scale up the operations to the scale that their company needed, which required cataloging tens of thousands or even more data assets to make them discoverable and understandable. We're working with customers across healthcare and finance, and we're seeing this problem everywhere. And of course, having big operations ourselves, we've run, to, run into it here and there too. So to solve this problem, we built in custom machine learning solutions to help curate your catalog at scale without the manpower you would need for manual data curation. Before we go into how we do that, let's look at how a typical database table looks like. Usually, the technical metadata that's stored in the database with the actual data is very cryptic. It consists of abbreviations that few people understand. Um, it's very hard to read. It's very hard to understand. And if you search for it by using business terms like in the finance domain that these uh, data example data sets come from, like payments or uh, customer, you won't find them. So what we need is a system that helps us describe these data assets in business language. Let's look at the solutions we've implemented in DataZone to help you solve that problem at scale. Here we are within DataZone, and somebody has already imported the data assets for us that we're going to use in this demo. So again, it's a finance data set, and we are in DataZone's data inventory. So it, this is the view that a data owner or data steward gets off his data before it's published into the catalog where a user can see it. So our job is to publish these data sets, but before we publish them, we want to make sure the metadata in them is well curated. If we're looking at the first data asset, for example, PMNT underscore CSH underscore EU, that's not understandable. We want our users to understand it. So let's go ahead and curate that metadata. Now, fortunately, business name generation within data zone, which is active by default when you import data from a data source, is already recommending business names for the table names and the columns. So here for PMNT underscore CSH underscore EU, it's recommended payment cash Europe. And that's great. I'm going to accept that. And then I look at the recommendations for the different column names and I find them all good. So I can just go ahead and accept them all. And I'm done curating this data asset. I can publish it into the catalog. And now we repeat this for the other assets in the inventory. Let's go to the next one, VD underscore PMNTEU. Let's look at the recommendation. The recommendation is video payment European. Here I want to do a modification because as a data owner, I know this is not about video. This should be vendor payment Europe. From time to time, especially if the abbreviations are really strange, like VD for vendor, the ML will give us recommendations that we have to correct. But as we go through this exercise, you will see that we're still, it's still saving us a lot of time, even in cases like this. So here, let's correct the video again. 
go for vendor change the ref to reference obviously the ai went with the video theme so here it thought that might that means published as you publish videos but no it means payable in this context so let me quickly correct that too and then look at the other column names those look good except for the video here again which i just quickly correct and the other names were all good so i accept the rest and we're ready to publish so see even though i had to correct some of the recommendations overall i was still much faster than having to type in everything by myself and let's go to the next we've got two left payments online eu i like it that one is good the column names are all good again i just go for accept all this time right away i publish it and i go to the last asset in the inventory it's a customer details table and yes it's correctly it's correctly identified as that there is one missing recommendation ft name that's first and let's look at the other ones they're all good there's a second page here let's quickly check that out too country country code zip code address Proof of payment type should actually be preferred payment type. So we quickly check that. Preferred. Now I just need to check my typing too. And here we go. We published that one too. And we're done publishing them all with proper business names. We can find them cleaned up in the inventory. And when we go to the published data, we find them as well. So as quickly as that, well, let's quick, there's one that hasn't been updated. Let's quickly check that out. I just go for the accept all again. And I click on republish. probably didn't push the button properly before. So let's check it. Yes, now it's good. Go to the published data assets. And now they're all there, they're all published. And suddenly looks way different than before. I can easily quickly understand what they're about. And when I search here now, and I type in customer, the customer details table surfaces. Before, as it was just cost underscore DDTLL underscore EU, it wouldn't have surfaced. So we've just made discovering data way easier and obviously also understanding it once it's found. So let's recap what we did here. We published four data assets into the data inventory of DataZone. And then we went ahead and curated them, provided understandable business names for the data assets names and its columns and publish those data assets into the catalog. Now, catalog users, like in this demo, it would be my colleagues who, who analyze those data sets, could now easily find and understand those data assets. Automated metadata generation in DataZone doesn't just work for the finance domain as we demoed it here. We trained it on data from across many domains so it works accurately. And behind that, powering this feature, we have a GPT-like model that takes the cryptic table names and column names, infers, infers the context of the data asset from this information and uses it to generate those names. We will continuously improve this model to get you the best accuracy on these 
metadata recommendations. So thank you for your attention. We appreciate the time you're taking with us in this webinar today. And uh, we would like to open the floor for questions. Any questions you might have concerning the demo we just showed you or the presentation we gave you before.